Hopefully this is a relatively quick and short video. A while back I kind of did an operational video of how these actually work, the tire changers. This is a Coates 5030 and I just kind of went through what it takes to change a tire on one so the inquisitive minds like me just kind of knew how they worked. And I kind of flashed over here and I said that its brother was a Coates 1001 and someday I would do a how-to video with it. And I've gotten a lot of emails and comments recently wanting to know how these work. So we're going to do this video to um, uh, kind of satisfy our curiosities of what it takes to balance a tire. This machine is a Coates 1001 direct drive. It is quite old. You can buy these machines in 120 volts, 220 volts, or three phase. So keep that in mind if you're going to buy one. Make sure you can get something that you can run. This is actually a three phase that's been converted. Uh, there is a conversion kit you can buy to run it on 220. And we're going to run this machine on 220 today. They're pretty much all about the same through the generations. They did kind of update the panels. The later models have cooler panels and, and you can kind of push buttons instead of dialing in all the measurements and we'll get there here in a second and talk about that uh, but i just want to kind of point the machine out it's just basically nothing more than a big box there's kind of a motor under the hood we'll take a look at that and uh, on the side is always kind of a place for instruments uh, actually they're more like accessories uh, so there's different size cones uh, for different size rims there's some springs in there and some other ways to deal with other rims. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's go ahead and uh, kind of get a rundown of how these machines operate and balance the tire. Now inside this machine, you can see there's really not a whole lot going on. There's some capacitors over here. And we have a transformer, uh, some very large relays or some type of uh, a latching circuits. And then we have the motor itself. And you can see that there is a, a disc back here with slots in it, so you know we're counting some rotations. And how all the other magic works under this, I, I just do not know. I haven't really spent a lot of time to learn what each part and piece does, but I do know this machine works pretty well, and I've recently calibrated it, so we can definitely balance tires with it. Now right off the bat, you need to find a cone that doesn't go through the center of the tire. So this one right there will be very adequate for it. You gotta find a spring. Put the spring on the shaft first, like that. Take your cone, put your cone on, like that. We're gonna set the tire on, and then we're gonna tighten it up. And once you have the tire on, you're gonna take this device here, you're gonna stick this on, and you're going to tighten it up as tight as you can get it. Okay? Oh, I like that squeaking, don't you? A little bit of lube probably would have took care of that. So now it's nice and tight. Now a fast disclaimer, these machines have a hood that sits over the tire and that protects you. And I highly recommend you do not run one of these machines without that hood. That being said, my hood is broken. I have a new one on order. It's not here yet, but we are gonna run this machine without that hood. We're just gonna be very careful and I'm not gonna stand in line with the tire. Again, something you should not do. There are three points of data that you must enter into the machine before it will correctly balance your tire. These are three different dials and it kind of tells you what they are with the little picture. So the first dial, you need to set the distance from the edge of the rim to the edge of the machine. That's A. And I have it set on 8 and the reason I have it on 8 is they have a little indicator that's built in. It's right here. You take this out to the edge of the machine, and what you're going to see is our measurement is 8. So right to the left of that 6, you really can't see it's buried, but trust me, it is 8. So that's the first setting. Pretty simple. The second one, you have to use a tool that they provide, and it looks like this. It comes with the machine. Now the tool they give you is pretty simple to work. You just go from edge of the rim to the edge of the rim, and the indicator down here in the corner says 8.5. So we're going to set that dial to eight and a half. We're going to set this to 8.5, just like it measured. And we know the rim diameter is a 16. So we're going to dial this down to 16. Now that we have all of the data entered, the tire is mounted. We know it's locked on really good. You have set your hood down. We're pretending on that. You're going to go ahead and press the green start button. It's going to spin the tire up a couple of times and it's going to give us some numbers to work with. These are pretty simple. It means we need to add 0.75 ounce weight to the left and a 0.50 ounce weight to the right. And as I spin this wheel, it'll tell you where those weights need to go. 
So I'm spinning it up and see where I have a double flashing light right here. That means I need to put a 0.50 ounce weight right here on the edge, on the very top. And if you look at the other side, I'm gonna spin the wheel a little bit more. And we're gonna make it do a double light. And right about there, I'm not gonna be able to zero in on that, but that's close enough. We're gonna put a 0.75 right there. Now, because I don't wanna keep this tire on this rim and we're just doing a demonstration, I'm gonna use sticky weights instead of my actual rear weights. I just don't wanna waste them. But basically, you set the tire up so that you have the double lights in the center. So if you look right up there, you're gonna see the double lights. And I know the very top of the tire on this side of the rim is where I need to stick the sticky weights. These are 0.25 each. So two of them will be 0.5, which should be good enough. So I'm going to stick that here, just like that. Then we're going to set the other side. So we're going to rotate until we get the double lights. And if you look right up there, we have the double flashing lights, which is what we want. And we're going to put three of them there. 0.25 times three is 0.75. Now at this point, I've put the weights on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and hit the start button and we'll see if it needs more balancing. And it may, This I know this tire is actually out of balance quite a bit. Okay, the machine says we need to put a 0.25 ounce weight on the left side. It says 0.25 right there. So we'll set this up so we have the double dots. So somewhere right about there, we're going to stick a 0.25 ounce weight on that side. Again, we're just going to use a cheap sticky weight because we don't want to waste our rear weights on a tire we're not going to keep. So we'll stick it right here on the underside, just like that. And then we hit the go button one more time. So this tire is now in balance. So it's really that simple. If you have the right equipment, it doesn't really take a lot of effort or work because the machine does all the calibration and balancing for you. On the top of the machine, you see it has this pretty decent tray. And I keep stuff that I normally use on, on for tires and wheels here, just so it's kind of organized. My weights aren't really labeled correctly. I don't really use the numbers. I just kind of know what size equals what weight. They're also stamped on them. Uh, this machine came from another shop, and I just have not had the time to relabel the appropriate spots. It doesn't really matter to me. I do keep some rubber cement and some patches and stuff in here, uh, a couple different types of valve stem core removers. Uh, I have a bag of balancing beads. I love these. They work great. Uh, some tire repair tools. So if you need to plug one, you can plug one. Uh, I keep some valve cores, um, you know, the, the entire piece here, actually the whole valve stem. And then I keep some more valve cores. I have a couple different kinds. I have filtered valve cores, which are great for the beads so they don't fall into the filter. And uh, just everything you would need to fix a tire. I just keep on the top of this machine so I know where it's at. So there's a um, valve stem puller here. These are pretty cool. You screw it down on, you can pull them out of the rim pretty easy. And obviously the, the hammer and weight remover as well. So that is all there is to my Coates 1001 tire balancer. Now, probably the question going through everybody's head is, what does this guy do that he needs a tire changer and a balancer? Well, not really a whole lot of anything other than I found myself changing a lot of tires and, and I just kind of got tired of it and I went down to a shop to have some some tires put on some rims and it, it just cost more than I expected and I said you know I can definitely buy this equipment and do it myself and in the long run save some money and maybe on the side pick up a few extra bucks changing some you know rims and tires for people so that's why I have these machines if you dig around you can really find them cheap if you're patient and you're willing to just kind of watch the market occasionally they pop up for really not a lot of money on this channel, I normally focus on building a lot of things and doing a lot of things yourself. And as you pan around my shop, you can see, A, that it's a complete disaster and a mess. But there are a lot of projects that are just kind of hanging around that need finished. So like and subscribe, and maybe you'll see a project or something that might interest you. At the very least, you might be entertained.